What is going on everyone? It's your boy Ethan. Hope you're having a great day. This video you're going to be seeing is part two of this $3,000 buy-in tournament and it's certainly a fun one. If you missed part one, I recommend checking it out so you get the whole complete story and journey of what happened, but this is going to be day two of the event. I'm not going to spoil if you didn't see what happened in the last video. I have some chips and they happened in a very fun, entertaining way, so you should check out that video. But this one, hopping to day two, trying to run it up. We are not in the money yet to start the day, not even close to it actually so it's gonna be a long day a lot of poker wish us some luck because there's a lot of money for first place in all of these tournaments hoping for a deep run let's get into it okay entering day two just found out my table mates not great it's gonna be a tough table tough day tournament starts in 10 minutes now uh, everyone at my table has like over a million in earnings so not gonna be uh, not gonna be the easiest of times super tough table but ready to battle wish us luck Let's get into it. Entering level two of this $3,000 buy-in. Late register open and we're entering level 11. Blinder 1,000, 2,000, 2,000 with 107,000 to start the day. Let's start off with his hand. King, queen of spades in plus one. I raise it up to 4,500 and get the big blind to defend. So we're going heads up and the flop is queen 10, three, two clubs and a spade. So pretty good way to start off the day. He checks it over to me and I bet 5,000 with top pair and a really good kicker. He ends up making the call. We're going to a turn, which is the three of clubs. Now board is paired, but the flush draw gets there. He starts with the check to me and with the flush draw getting there, I decided to play this a little bit slower, a little bit more conservative and check back. Off to a river now, which is the eight of spades. Doesn't really change the board a whole lot. I guess Jack nine does get there. And he decides to lead out for 11,000. Uh, all right. Well, I have a good one pair, good queen here. And I guess I'm not going to be folding this one. He can be betting with a lot of worse hands, maybe some bluffs. So I make the call and no bluff here. He has eight deuce of clubs got there for the flush. Not the best start to the day, unfortunately. Luckily, the table breaks relatively quickly after that hand, so not going to play in a super tough table, but in this next table, next hand here, level 12, blinds are increased, and I have king jack offsuit in the small blind. There is a cutoff open to 5,500. Here with this hand facing a late position raise, I think it plays best as a three bet. Also could call as well, but I decided to raise it up to 18,000. Big blind folds, but this cutoff does not fold. He makes the call and we're gonna battle it out to a flop of Jack nine five rainbow. Here, I think on these Jack nine high boards, it's supposed to favor the in position player. So certainly could bet with my hand, top pair and a good kicker, but I decided to check and he checks it back. So this hand is going to be a doozy when we see the three of clubs on the turn. Full rainbow now, and I think as played, I should be betting. Probably could bet bigger than I actually did, but I decided to size to 17,000. Definitely, there's a lot of hands I can get value from, and definitely a spot where I should be putting money in the middle. And for 17,000, he makes the call. Okay, going to river, and it's developing into the 10 of diamonds. Not really the best card in the world. Pretty disastrous as a lot of two pair combos get there and I decided to check. Upon this check, this gentleman, he decides to go all in. He covers me and it's about 70,000 effective, basically a pot sized jam. And hey, come on, man, this, this is a pretty bad spot. It's not feeling comfortable about this at all. And usually in these WSOP fields and even on these river decisions, not too many bluffs. I have not seen many bluffs at all, especially for the all-in size. So this just kind of leads me to want to fold a lot more than not. And even good one pairs, top pair holdings like that, feels pretty uncomfortable in these bad boards. So he easily can have hands like pocket tens or jack 10 and I don't think he's gonna turn a hand like queen 10 into a bluff. So he's polarizing himself, saying he has some really strong hands containing a 10. Or he just has a bunch of bluffs that uh, I don't even know if I can find here as played. So uh, I guess I just fold, make a really painful one, and just move on with my 70,000 stack. Moving on into the next spot, I pick up queen three off suit in the big line. Not the best hand in the world. So when action checks to the small one player, got to my right, he decides to limp. Sure, okay, sure. Let's see a flop. I check behind, and the flop comes 10, 10, three rainbow. I have a pair, and he checks it over to me. Trying to protect my pair of threes, it's really not that great. I decided to bet 2,500 here in this spot. And then this player check raises to 5,500. Huh. 
Seems like he's either full of it, bluffing, or he actually has a 10. I feel like a lot of players that have trips in this spot probably won't raise and would slow play. Anyways, I just make the call a little curious for 3,000 more. Let's see a turn, which is the deuce of clubs. Brings in a backdoor flush draw and honestly, a very innocent card for my pair of threes here. And he actually decides to bet it again for 6,000. All right, once again, either full of it or just repping a 10. This card is as good as I can ask for to continue on. So I call again with my pair of threes and the river is a board pairing deuce again. Another really innocent card and it's not like he's gonna have any deuces right now. So still sticking to the plan, probably gonna call a bet and he sizes to 19,000. Definitely sizing way the hell up here and another annoyingly tough spot to be in. This time, I feel like I want to bluff catch as he's only repping a 10 in his hand. Something about these 10s on the boards are just not really my friend here. I make the call hoping to see he has air, but he has jack 10 off suit. Yep, getting crushed now. Start of the day with 100,000. I've lost every single hand so far down to 35K in my stack. Since the queen three hand, I've shoved up a little bit to 60,000, mainly just going all in and getting folds. And always picking up the blinds here, I pick up king queen off suit in the hijack. There's a plus two raise to 6,000, and I think I have a decision to either jam or make the call. Versus an early vision player, I certainly want to jam better hand here. So I decided to see a flop with this. I decided to make the call. And now action folds to the small blind, who goes all in for 135,000. Very much covering my stack, and action folds back to me. Another annoying spot, that's the theme of this tournament so far. Considering I have about 20 big blinds here, and I don't know, he'll mostly have a pocket pair a lot of the time, as I block the stronger ace-king and ace-queen hands that he could have, and pocket kings and pocket queens at that. So, uh, you know, Time for a flip. I make the call, let's gamble. Gambling, that is not what we're doing because he has ace queen. I am purely trying to win as a heavy underdog. Not great. And the flop comes king high. No way. Turn comes another king, giving me a full double up. Luckbox city, population, me. Get the double up and I'm feeling great. All right, I finally got a stack because I sucked out. And now I pick up a premium pocket queens. Things can't go better than this. I'm in the low jack and the player to my right raises to 7,000. All right, time to bump up the size of the pot here. I three bet to 17,000. Action folds around to this player to my right and he makes the call. So we're going in position to a flop of 10, 10, nine, two spades. These board pairing 10 hands have screwed me in the pass against his opponent, but here feeling good about my queens. He checks it over to me and I decide to bet out 11,000. And for 11,000, he decides to make the call. Now going to a turn, which is the three of spades. Once again, pretty unfortunate that the backdoor flush draw got there. Anyways, he checks it over to me now and sitting with no spade in my hand with my overpair, I decided to check back, be more conservative again. Now, going to river, it is the deuce of spades. Gross. Very, very unfortunate, as I'm probably not going to win this one. He checks it over to me, though, and I have an easy decision to just check back with just a pair of queens. And he shows me queen 10 of hearts. Yep. Once again, two 10s on the board, bites me in the ass, and he's going to win. Chipping back down, can't win with the premiums, but shout out to my opponent, Green Bay, who watches the vlogs and won this hand. 10s are hot for him. Blinds have increased. I have about 90,000 in my stack and there's an only going to open to 8,000 in this hand. There's a cutoff and button who make the call and I decide to look down at my cards and peel ace queen of diamonds. Oh yeah, I'm in here. I have less than 25 big lines and this is a perfect spot to squeeze all in. Not only do I probably take down a bigger pot since there's a bunch of dead money in the middle, but hopefully I can just win this one with a good hand. I go all in and jam the big blind tanks. It ends up folding. All right, we get one fold through. Then the only one player decides to rejam for a similar size stack. That is not great. And when action folds to the button who has a decision, he flashes me his cards. He has ace queen off suit. That's not good. And he ends up folding. So knowing that probably two of my outs are dead, we're off to see what happens. The only one player shows ace king. Oh no. Not only is it so bad that we are heavily dominated, we know that one of our three outs are already folded into the muck. 
All right, dealer, run your magic. The flop is queen high. No way. The run out ends up being clean. I don't understand what the hell is going on. I can't get it in any worse than I am right now in coming out ahead, winning. Another trip to Luckbox City. My stack is at 200,000 after this massive pot that I never should have won. And here we are, feeling good, having a bunch of chips, and yeah, just living the Luckbox life. All right, we're on a quick little break here right now after playing, uh, after playing some poker. Ah, <sighs> just, just, just such a luck box. I'm not really good at this game, but you know, luck is all that matters. You don't have to be good, just get lucky. Currently 245-ish players left, 186 make the money. So we're pretty close right now. 70 left need a bust and there's a chance. I have average stack, like just about 200,000 and anything can happen. I can have max pain or we can ship the thing. I don't know, let's try to get lucky and keep on tripping up. After the break, blinds have increased again in level 15, and I pick up the Rockets. Damn right. Aces in plus two. There's a plus one raise to 10,000. He needs a pretty short stack. Now, definitely thinking that I could raise here because there's so many other people behind me. So I decided to call here, something that I would never do. Then that incentivizes the cutoff and big line to call as well. So multi-way to a flop, which isn't amazing. The flop comes king, king, jack, two diamonds. Definitely not the best flop in the world here, but when action checks to me, I have to bet something. So I size to 13,000. Action folds around to the player on my right who raised preflop, and he ends up making the call. I don't actually love this spot since he plays a lot of King X this way as being a short stack, but here we are. Anyways, the turn is the three of diamonds. The backdoor flush draw gets there. I have no diamond. It seems to be a theme. The flush draws always get there. Action ends up going check, check. The turn is now a 10 this board really sucks as I lose to any king, pocket jacks, or even pocket tens. But he decides to block bet 13,000. And certainly not going to raise facing this small sizing. I just make the call, and he shows me a disastrous hand. Pocket queens. Yeah, I win the pot. That's fine or whatever. But I easily could have won a little bit more. I missed out on about twenty or 25,000 worth of chips if I just played it normal and raised preflop. Here I am. I'm a sucker. I'll take the pot down though, at least. Moving on to the next level, level 17 blinds have increased once again, and I pick up jack 10 of hearts in plus one. I raise it up to 13,000 and action folds around to the big blind. He thinks about it for a while and ends up going all in. I count it out and it's just under 100,000, so about 15 big blinds. We're really close to the money here, so I can't imagine this player's jamming too light. But, uh, you know, I didn't play this tournament to not gamble. Jack-10 suited. It's pretty. It's 40% of a royal. Let's just run it here, hoping to see we're up against some bigger cards like King-Queen or Ace-King. I make the call, and he does luckily have Ace-King off suit. So I have plenty of life here, and the flop comes Jack-High. Yeah, who would have thought? I'm winning my all-ins. The runout is clean. I fade the over cards, and I win. I chip up in another massive way, almost 300,000 in my stack now, and with 191 players left, we're close to the money, and shortly after, you'll see the clip where we are announced officially in the money. You're all in the money. I have locked up $4,800 so far as a min cash, and with over 450,000 for first place, Let's get this dub. The next fun hand we play, blinds have increased in level 17 now with about 300,000 in my stack. I pick up jack nine of hearts in the hijack and there's an ungun open to 17,000. Seems like a pretty good pro and action folds to me. If I'm going to play jack nine of hearts, I feel like calling really is out of the question here. It's a little too weak and uh, I'm happy to start three bet bluffing as I haven't really done that so far in this session. So I decided to put in a raise, happy to start applying pressure here as the bigger stack. I raise it up to 43,000. Action folds around to this player and he makes the call after thinking about it for a while. We're off to see a flop in position, which comes queen, queen, jack. Rainbow. I end up with a pair, which is actually pretty interesting. But when he decides to check it over to me here, thinking about what are the strongest hands I have here in this spot, which would mainly be over pairs and some queen X. So definitely going to bet for value and I'm gonna size to a smaller size of 12,000. Almost 10% of the pot. So this is sizing really small. I don't expect him to fold here ever for this price with any of his holdings that he could have, like smaller pocket pairs or even ace highs. And he does end up making the call as expected. 
So we're going to a turn now, which is the Queen of Spades. And I have a gut shot straight draw, and he checks it over to me once again. Overall, I feel like a lot of my overpairs would might want to start checking at some frequency at this point. And I'm going to play it like I have an overpair, even though I only have a pair of jacks. I end up checking back. That's what I do. Off to a river now, which is a bink 10. Yeah, who would have thought? I was going to get there. Damn right, I'm getting there. Hitting the straight with a four liner with a nine. Ace king is also the nuts as well, basically, with Broadway. He checks for a third time, and it's certainly time to bet for value. It's a weird decision point to think about how much I want to bet, whether it's small or big or in between half pot. Not really sure. So I decided to go for a smaller sizing in game right now, and I bet out 38,000. And this guy goes deep into the tank. He waits and waits, and we're sitting here hoping to get paid. And ultimately, he ends up changing his posture mid tank. And he changed it in such a way where it's pretty obvious that he's not going to be raising anymore. He's just thinking about folding or calling, so I'm feeling a lot more comfortable as now I most likely just have the best hand with my nine for a straight. And ultimately, ends up making the call, flicking in chips in the middle. I show my hand and I win. Massive three bet pot to win, pushing me well over 400,000 in chips. I am just sun running this tournament right now and things are going really well. As well as things are going, let's keep the momentum going here with pocket sevens in the cutoff. I raise it up to 18,000, the button folds, but then the small blind decides to go all in of about 150,000. The big line folds, and here against this sizing of an all-in, it seems like a really standard call, in theory at least, but thinking about this opponent and this exact player, do I think he's actually going to be jamming as frequently as he should be? The answer would be no. Seems like he's here on vacation for fun and running deep in this tournament. Most of the time, people will be jamming a little bit stronger than they should be, and uh, I'm unsure. I guess uh, with pocket sevens here, I think I just have to go with a call given that the short stacked all in, and I'm praying for a flip, essentially. So let's go for it. I'm flicking a call, and he has ace king. All right, feeling fine. If I can win jack 10 versus ace king, I can win pocket sevens versus ace king right. But the flop comes ace king high, and... It's going to be hard to improve with only two more outs. No bank city for me in this hand. I lose the flip. My stack is back down to around 260,000. After losing the flip in that level, we're on to the next level of level 18. This hand with 250,000 in my stack, I'm on the button and there's a cutoff all in for about 130,000. About 13 big blinds and I peel ace king. Okay. What a dream scenario. Really needed this. Need to pick up these chips here, so I rejam myself. The blinds fold, and I am see that I'm up against ace nine of hearts. That's pretty good, as I'm a heavy favorite to win, and the flop comes ace high. Just have to fade a nine on the turn in rivers, which I end up doing. Let's go. I chip up massively. I'm back up to 400,000 in chips. This is the, the crazy variance of tournaments. You can lose one hand, win another all in, and we're back up to where I was. Okay, entering the final break of this day. This tall um, guy's here. Having a lot of fun. Yeah, we're in it. Huge prize pool, over half a million up top. Yeah, yeah, I was wrong. I thought it was 400K, but it's 550. Yeah. 560 almost. So, so big spot for both of us. About 100 players left. Yeah, 100 players left. We got good stacks. And you have a good table? At a great table. I have a right tough now. table, but I only have two more hours in the day, so. Yeah, we've been playing for eight hours so far today. It's been a long grind entering the final break. Hopefully, we'll, we'll make it to day three. That's the update no, we're, right now. We're making it to day three. Hopefully, we'll make it to day three. <laughs> <laughs> Last time that we were both in the money in a tournament together, uh, good things happened for for me or for one you? of us. For you. Me, yes. yes. Me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh yes, Venetian. I remember. I got like that 70 was... something and yeah. you, uh, well, you won the thing. Yeah, I got first. That was yeah. nice. Maybe this time you'll you'll take first. But uh, yeah, maybe we'll get to anything interesting in the next two hours. This is a grind. 10-hour poker days. Let's, let's hop back into the action. Following break now. Again, next level of level 19. About 400,000 in stack, and I pick up Ace Jack of Diamonds on the button. Action starts with a cutoff raising to 24,000, and this hand, I'm happy to play in position against a player who can be raising really wide. So I decide to call, and the blinds fold. Going heads up to a flop of Ace 10 Deuce, all hearts. Having all hearts and a flush available doesn't make me feel super comfortable with my top pair, but when he bets out 40,000, I'm definitely not going anywhere with Ace Jack. 
I make the call in hoping to fade a heart. The turn is a brick deuce of clubs. As great of a card as I can ask for, and he now decides to check. Facing this decision here, I think it's time to bet big. Think of a lot of his hands that are trying to bet the flop and then check turn. Might have a heart in their hand, and I'm trying to charge for those draws. So I bet out 125,000. If he wants to make the call, awesome. Hopefully I'm ahead a lot of the time and fade a heart. But if he wants to fold, I'll happily take down a big pot as well anyways for this stage of the tournament. But when I bet this, he immediately doesn't look happy. And I'm hoping he's not just Hollywooding and goes all in because that can happen sometimes. But he ends up saying he has queen 10 with the queen of hearts and folds. Phew, nice. I'll take it down even though he had a lot of equity and my stack is over 500,000. That's an important milestone to reach. In the same level, I pick up queen nine offsuit in the cutoff. I raise it up to 26,000 and only the big blind defense. And he also has a similar size stack. So two of the bigger stacks on the table battling. Let's see a flop of king 10, five rainbow. He checks it over to me and on these boards with two Broadway cards, I'm gonna bet small and expect to take it down a lot of the time. I bet out 15,000 and he doesn't fold, but he ends up making the call. So I have a gutter, let's just spike it, right? The turn, jack of clubs. Thank you, dealer. That's what I asked for and he delivered. Brings in a backdoor flush draw, but shouldn't be too relevant. He checks it over to me again and I'm gonna size up for sure. This board should hit me a lot more than my opponent and sitting with basically the nuts, second nuts behind ace queen, I decided to bet out 80,000, about 80% 80 of the pot. Sizing up here and he thinks about his decision for a while before ending up on a call. Big pot brewing here. We just have to fade a brick or I don't even know. I don't even know what I have to fade. I feel like I just got the winner here regardless of what happens. The river is the king of clubs though. So that's a little dicey. Board is paired, the flush draw gets there, and he starts with a check. Interesting spots, and I think I'm just going to have to blast off here. Got a bet for value, and I have the nine of clubs, which reduces some flush combinations. So I go for it, hoping he has a king for trips and won't be able to fold them. I bet out 200,000, and he doesn't take too long. Before making the call, I show my hand, let's scoop this massive pot. He shows ace queen off suit, what? Oh my God, he has Broadway? The turn jack was an absolute disaster. I lose way too many of my chips. I'm down to under 200,000 in my stack now, and that's brutal. Pretty brutal beat. Basically the second nuts running into the nuts. And uh, I don't know, feels like a spot where he should never have ace queen given the dynamics and given the position I raised from. But uh, that's painful. I'm short stack now and gotta run it up somehow. Blinds have increased, which is not good for me as a short stack. We're in level 20 now. Blinds are 10, 15, 15K with 130,000 in my stack, under 10 big blinds now. And action folds around to me. I peel 10, eight off suit in the small blind and it's a good hand to just go all in with. Hoping to get a fold as the big blind can hold a lot of trash. I jam under 10 big blinds. The big blind wakes up with ace seven of hearts. That's a pretty good hand to call with. And uh, you know, we're going to a run out, but no drama. The flop, he just flops a freaking boat. And that's GG's for me. Ending up in 91st place. Not the deep run that I was looking for, but it's always nice to cash, especially in a $3,000 buy-in. But feels pretty bad after that queen nine hand. All right, uh, nine hours of poker today ends in at least a cash. I think I cashed like $6,400, give or take. So in for two bullets of this 3K, out for 6,400, which is like a profit of $400. Finding a way to maintain being positive. Uh, I'm not really too upset, to be quite honest. I mean, I sucked out a lot. I just, I sucked out a lot and I got really lucky throughout the majority of the day, but straight under straight kind of sucks. And that's it. 10 8 offsuit is like borderline, but with very few big blinds, uh, I just kind of went for it. Hoped he had a shitty hand, and he didn't. There it is. Still got a long series ahead of us. Five more weeks to go. This is still, this is the second tournament that I've played. So definitely looking forward to more tournament videos. Thanks so much for sticking to the end. It's nice to find another cash. Maybe one of these days will be a deeper run, but 91st out of uh, 1,240 entries, not horrible, but appreciate you guys for tuning in. If you want to follow along for some more live sweats, just follow me on Instagram or Twitter, I'm posting updates there. I'll see you guys next time. Peace.